187 at 5810 Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. <clears throat> um, all right, then. What's with that getup of yours, anyway? I should start what? introducing us as Detective Earl, and this is my science teacher, Mr. Phelps. Your interest in my appearance is starting to get me worrying. Like it or not, we're a dysfunctional couple now. People judge me with you on my arm the same way they would a fat broad with a five o'clock shadow. I really hope you're joking, Roy. You seem distracted. We recovered the morphine. Some of it might be unaccounted for, so what? That's life. We did our job. Closing one case opens another. Do you have any idea what is really going on while we're wasting our time following this stuff? Are you going to tell me? The deals being done right now will change the face of L.A. forever, and we're wasting our time on some hump. Someone's little girl. Visit the morgue at the end of the month when the John and Jane Doe's are cremated. Their percentages. The odds for and against lightning striking. Second floor, apartment six, in the back. Thanks. Thanks. What's this? Wait a minute. What? 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 But it. Val will be pleased. Well, that's hardly conclusive, given the number of those things we've come across recently. The autopsy mm. will confirm it one way or another. Yeah. Bukowski, oh. you made homicide. That I did. Hey. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? Or can we get on with it? Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. Mm. We heard Carruthers thinks... Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub. Rest in peace. Case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. <clears throat> hmm. Uh. Hmm. Nope. Aha. Uh -huh. Nope. Aha. Uh -huh. Top end of town stuff. Gives us somewhere to look. Oh. Okay. Is there something behind it? No. Um. What about this one? <clears throat> There's been a modeling assignment. Hmm. Oh. Six five eight two. It's place to start. Hollywood Boulevard. Hmm. What about this one? Beautiful girl. The clothes certainly aren't from the Sears catalog. How would you know that, Cole? You pervert. <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh-huh. A lot of pictures for this broad. Oh. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind? 
Sir? Look, I, I can't nothing to tell you, and I can't Phelps? work with you under my Bow. goddamn nose. We've had a look second. around. Hello. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? May I took a look? Be my guest. <sighs> Take a closer look at her head and neck. Hold on, though. Um, let's check the other things first. Oh, ah, no, no, no. Examine it again. Examine it again. Bruising on the forearms, and these look like bite marks. Very good. Right. Thanks. Um, anything here? No, put put that away. There's nothing on the torso. Okay. <sighs> Fine. Uh very unusual ring. It could be wrong, hmm. but it looks like a black sapphire. Yeah. Looks like it, sure. Uh the neck is bruised pretty badly. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine. And the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. And spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the Surettes. It would make my theory. The morphine would have been very quick. And there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay, so find two guys who recently bought Surettes and weren't junkies. And you might be onto something. Hmm. All right. Um, no. Uh, Alright, I guess we're done here. Um, nope. Fox Millinery Supply. Oh, what's this? Quality English smoking jacket. I don't know anyone under 45 who would wear one. Hmm. From Haskell and Shaw. Interesting. Uh, some pills. Uh. Looks like barbiturates. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um. What's this? Barbiturates. <laughs> what else huh. is rattling around in this thing? Oh. Well, examine it. Let's see. Oh. Take only one capsule. Doctor. Prescribing both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. Hmm. Interesting. All right then. Um. Carruthers. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine. And the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. And spread a trail of barbiturates. And morphine would have been very quick. And there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay, so find two guys who recently bought Surettes and weren't junkies. And you might be onto something. Right, okay. Thanks, Carruthers. Excuse me, miss. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I, who else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. So. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. Um, are you sure? 
What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julie was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. There's like... There's like 20 pills scattered across the, the apartment. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox. The things she hid in there. Yes. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star. A princess. Does modeling really pay that well? Depends on what you're modeling. Did Miss Randall have many friends visit? I'm not sure. I only come around twice a week. A nosy hag like you would know that. Come Why on. Are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. I will not speak ill of the dead. Uh, you can't prove that. Your shit at your job if you don't if you didn't see the men's smoking jacket. Who owns the smoking jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. That's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. Hmm. What was it like working for Miss Randall? Perfectly fine, officer. Is it? Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Mm. Thanks, Mrs. Reynoldson. You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement, and then you can go home. So, I think our work is done here. Stefan Rusty, we'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? Say so, yeah. You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm a Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. Bukowski, Galloway, quite the little reunion in there. Almost brought a tear to my eye. They're good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast, you barely had time to learn their names. Let me fill you in. Bukowski's a pushover. Galloway's a drunk. You could learn a thing or two from both of them. Please. They couldn't work a vice case if their life depended on it. I don't see why they'd be any better or worse at it than me. I noticed you said better. Hubris disguised as humility. Kind of your trademark, don't you think? Why do you always twist everything? Galloway's got nothing to prove. He's been on homicide for years. And he's welcome to it. You're a terrier, Phelps, and that's what I need. Not some old bulldog who can't get up a flight of stairs without coughing up his lunch. help you with today. And throw my head away. Hello. LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. So. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Uh-huh. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The wives weren't happy, and neither was I. I see. Did she have any close friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Sure. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. Hello. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. I She's see. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. 
She's full of life, a <laughs> wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? Hmm. That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. Yeah. <clears throat> so. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiance, Henry Arnett. Uh huh. Henry is your beau. Tell us about him. Yes, he is. <laughs> Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. I see. Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? Um. She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. Hmm. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiance to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't uh, think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, oh no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. Yeah. All right, Dr. Stonermans, here we go. Nice move not telling old Sweet Lips in there about her friend taking the big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more uh, out of her that way. You're learning, Phelps. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. Is that really what it takes? Yes, sir, your name? Hello? LAPD. We'd like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. <clears throat> Your investigation is much more important than my sciatica. I'm Hello. Dr. Stoneman, we are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind uh -huh. if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege, detective. Mm-hmm. How well did you know Ms. Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Are you sure, doctor? Julia Randall has been your patient for nearly a year. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? No, although that would be helpful. I have, um, I have something else. Your prescriptions contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but no. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. Uh-huh. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. No, that's not it, doctor. Benzedrine is addictive. As I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. Uh-huh. That'll be all for now, doctor. We'll be in touch. Say it. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. Hello. Any messages? Yes, Detective. The coroner has been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Please. Thank you. Sure. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. 
Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. All right. Say it. The old boy is lying. About what? I don't know. He looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange mm. reaction to have to the death of a young patient. Have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician-patient privilege card when they got something to hide? There are certain things people have a right to keep private. Until it gets in the way of police work. And it's only private when it suits them. A couple of drinks and every doctor I've met will spill your darkest secrets in a heartbeat. Paul, Roy, I have some information for you. Yeah. The only person enjoying this, Mal, get on with it. The bruising confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. All right, Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two by four. So what? Right. I found two surrettes in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. We're listening, Mal. No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Mal. Maybe an hour or two after the Randall girl. So you're saying Laughing Boy here hmm. could be one of our killers? That's a hell of a long shot. Thanks, Mal. We'll check it out. I found something else. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, what? What'd you find? Uh... Sorry, what? I don't play. Honor Comet. What? His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Oh. Oh. Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. They have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Let me know how you get on. Sure, Mal. All Thanks right. For the lead. Sure, Mal. Thanks for the lead. Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Burrow. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. It's the least I could do. Terrible news about Julia. Uh huh. So. How well did you know Julia Randall? Vaguely. I'm in the clothing business, and Julia occasionally monitored me. Hmm. So you're saying it's just a professional relationship, huh? He's asking whether you banged her in a chuck-on-the-shoulder fraternity kind of way. I'm engaged to be married. It wouldn't be polite. Answer the question. This will remain private. Heather won't have to know. <laughs> yes. We had relations. Hmm. Miss Randall's landlady said she was seeing an older man. Could have been. I wasn't privy to all the details of Julia's private life. Is that right? Henry. I don't like when people lie to me. She was seeing a man named Henderson. You know who I'm talking about. Easy on, detective. I may have heard of Henderson, but I don't know his full name. I think he's from New York or someplace back east. Uh, try San Francisco. That's funny. Julia told her cleaning lady that he lived in San Francisco. Okay, you got me. I don't know where he's from. Julia wanted money. She always wanted money. Thought she could get something from this guy. She was wearing a distinctive engagement ring. You think she might have convinced him to buy it for her? Maybe he did, yeah. Maybe he and Julia were getting serious. Uh huh. Ever heard of a Jimmy LeBlanc? No. Should I have? Is, is he an entertainer or something? Hmm. So you wouldn't have any reason to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julia Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But, like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc character. Heather told us that you were in fashion. That's right. I see. Some kind of traveling salesman? Once I got out of the Corps, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. Fighting six. You were in the sixth Marines. Yes. Really? 
I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. That will be all for now. Uh huh. You've been very helpful. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have him get in touch via KGPL when they have some information. All right. He's in that car at the lights. I see him. He was squirming like a worm in there. Don't you love it when they pull the war hero excuse? Actually, maybe you don't. Money and fast. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him. See how he intends to spend the money. Too much slack. I get closer. Hoof it, Phelps. Oh, this again? I'll the car around when I'm done here. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's right, Mexico City. One way ticket, please. Next available seat. That would be one day from now. Is that okay? It's going to have to be. LAPD. Hey. The man who just came in here. You bought a ticket? Yes, sir. To Mexico City. Tomorrow night. If you hear from him again, don't mention this conversation. So, yep. Yeah. What have you got? He bought a ticket from Mexico City. Tomorrow night. That's good. But this is better. What? Oh my god. Oh. It's Fabergé. Should have seen the look on the pawnbroker's face when I told him to hand it over. The guy who owned the joint thought it was worth at least ten large. For a cigarette case. Arnett only got six hundred clams. Hmm. Dearest Beverly, with love and affection, always, J? Is that a J? Hmm. All right, then. Car 11K, 11 King, come in. Go ahead, Hello. KTPL. 11K, go to Hollywood Station. Homicide detectives Bukowski and Galloway have information relating to the Randall case. Roger, KGPL. 11K, on route. Car 11K, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King, yes. go ahead. R&I reports the last arresting officer for DOA, Jimmy LeBlanc, was patrolman Fred Wallace, who's working a shift on Hollywood 9th Beat, Sunset Boulevard, between Gordon and Wilcox. Car 11K, on hmm. route. All right. A one-way ticket to Mexico. Old Henry's looking as guilty as a dog next to a pile of dog shit. What's his motive? I can think of a few, but I'd put my money south of the belt. One guy plus two dames always equals problems. Right. Hey. Right behind you, Wallace. Detective Phelps. Need a little help there? Go left. I'm going right after this little prick in the alley. Uh, I'm guessing I'm going right too. Not really, I had a choice in that. Whoa, easy there, cowboy. What are you doing? What the hell? You boys know what you're doing? Whoa. Hands up. Wrong answer. Move, I've got 
Throw out the guns. Sit down. <sighs> Thanks. Outstanding yep. warrant, armed robbery. Knocked over a drugstore back there, and it looks like he brought his whole posse with him. Bad luck for them. They're all yours now. We need some information. Ever heard of a burglar goes by the name of Jimmy LeBlanc? Sure. We nabbed Jimmy on a burglary beef a couple of years back. They cut oh, yeah. to a music shop and into a jewelry store. He got four years. I miss his partner, though. His partner? His partner? Big guy. I had him cornered, and he picked up this huge display case and threw it out a plate glass window. Then he vaulted out of there like something out of Barnum and Bailey. Got away. I would have had him, except for LeBlanc yelling, run for it, Willie. And you think he was an acrobat of some sort? More like a strong man. A wrestler or a boxer, that kind of thing. Uh-huh. Let me help. You haven't done too badly yourself. Well I try my best. Uh alright. Let's go back to the station. There we go. <clears throat> You're suggesting LeBlanc is still working with Willie? I don't see why Strong not. Men held down Randall while someone administered the morphine. Someone right. with muscle opened up the long skull. Yeah. Yeah. We caught up with Mal. He's given us the dope on the Blanc. He worked burglaries with a big guy. Goes by the name of Willie. He might be our killer. Can you work boxing gyms, the Y, promoters, that kind of stuff? Since when have you started giving orders, Phelps? That Where's the burglary angle? There was no sign of a... That's where our net comes in. Next stop, we speak to Lacey about a list of recent burglaries. The guy's a bum. His office is a front, and he's behind on the rent and his phone bill. And he's skipping town. Tomorrow. Let's get him in and beat it out of it. Do you want to bring in the killer, Rusty? It could be too smart for your own good, Phelps. We've been talking about that, haven't we, Roy? What? Stefan? Finbar? Sir, I need the contraband list. Item stolen over the last year. Hang on, I'll dig out a copy for you. Here you go. Thanks. Thanks. Is the <clears throat> cigarette case on there? Uh, wireless radio, Fabergé, cigarette I must case. Be out of my mind trying to move this while under a murder cloud. Black sapphire ring. Julia Randall's ring. It's here. Uh, gold and emerald earrings. No. Nope. Uh, let's see. Mm, pearl ring. Even the engagement ring was purloined. Our net is a cad. Uh, gold can silver pillbox. Seems Julia wasn't the first board society girl to hide her bennies in that pillbox. Huh. So you and Rusty have been having discussions. Anything you would like to tell me, partner? Phelps, don't be so touchy. Rusty had his best ever clearance rate working with you. Even if the cases he worked on can't be discussed. We were just comparing notes. Uh-huh. You're a Boonaroo case man, Phelps. One of the best I've ever seen. Sure. Thanks. You gotta learn to take a compliment, Phelps. A hopped up model, a cat, and a circus freak. Only in LA. Fairy tales of the rich and famous. More like pathetic tales of the desperate to be rich and famous. Junkie Goldilocks and the three bears. Arnett, LeBlanc, and Willie. Don't you go putting the pieces together again before they fit, Phelps. Listen to your old pal Rusty. Or should I say Finbar? I wouldn't call him that if I were you. What do you care? It doesn't sound like you're the top of his Christmas card list. He gives everyone a hard time. That's just how he is. Whatever gets you through the day, Cole. Nice house. Hmm. Ha! 
<clears throat> LAPD. Hello. Is Mrs. Evestrom in? But she is. Would you follow me, sir? Okay. I am Mrs. Evestrom. How may I help you? We appear to have recovered Hello. some stolen goods that belong to you, ma'am. Yes, of course. That terrible burglary. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you, ma'am. We have some questions, if you don't mind. Why would I mind, young man, if you are returning 43 pieces of my property? Okay, before we get down to that, I'll have a scotch. Thanks, straight up. Maria, can you get the detective a drink, please? <clears throat> so, um... Can you describe to us what was stolen? It would be easier to describe what wasn't stolen, detective. <laughs> priceless tiara that has been in the family for 50 years. A Fabergé cigarette case that was worth $25,000. $25,000, huh? Are you sure about that? Why are you lying about the value of your jewelry, Mrs. Evestrom? Who do you think you are? Making heinous accusations in my own home. Uh, look. We recovered the cigarette case from a pawnbroker. No one knows the real value of an item better than those guys. I inflated its value for the insurance claim. There, are you satisfied? My daughter's boyfriend was quite taken with the case. I think he was even more disappointed than I was when it was stolen. Uh-huh. What can you tell us about the burglary? That terrible night, at least a year ago. But let's not go into that. Let's talk about what you've recovered. Um. Were you in the house when the burglary took place? Good heavens, no. I was at a social function held by a Dr. Harold Stoneman and his lovely wife. I returned home and all of my things were missing. That's about it for now, Mrs. Eastrom. The department will get in touch and let you know how you can recover your valuables. You have only mentioned a few of the items that have been stolen, Detective. What else has been recovered? You see, Phelps, that's why you get the drinks in early. Hello, Mother! Uh, Hello, Detectives. What is going on? We'd like to ask exactly Hello. the same question. You have met my daughter? This morning at work. Oh, mother and father divorced. I took my father's name. The detectives... Recovered some of the things that were stolen, darling. Well, what did you find? A sapphire ring on the corpse of Julia Randall. What are you talking about? Your engagement ring, Miss Swanson. Would you be surprised to know that it was part of the proceeds of a burglary? That's an outrageous allegation! Yes, it is. I suggest we go straight to Henry Arnett's place and sort this mess out. All right. Here we go. Thank you for listening to K Road Trip. Um, let me just uh, six seven one eight Yucca Street. Here we go. We're missing something here. Arnett is obviously arranging the burglaries. That's my fiance. You're making scurrilous accusations about. And Randall was obviously his partner. But neither of them are the type to creep apartments. You're being ridiculous. Both of you. There's there's a very good explanation for all of this. What a sock in it, sister. You're being played for a patsy and you're not even smart enough to see it. <sighs> all right. Come on, sister. Let's find out who your fiance really is. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you a resident? LAPD. LAPD. We're here to speak to Henry Arnett. Oh, uh, Mr. Arnett. Um, uh, apartment 30. You can take the lift. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. <clears throat> See. Isn't this just nice and awkward? Apartment. Oh. Let's 
going on? Uh, what's going on here? Put your hands in the air! Hands up. Hands where I can see them. Give it up, LAPD! Where do you think you're going? Huh? Come on. LAPD. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. No, 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 stop. Stop where you are, sir. Stop. I'm advising you to stop. Alright, so... Oh. <clears throat> Looks like he got you good, Phelps. Yeah, he really packs a wallop. How did I get back here? Under your own steam, miraculously. You came in through the window, said hello, and then keeled over. I see. Was our net. He's coming around, too. He's all hopped up. <sighs> time to get some answers. Hmm. Missing something, Henry? Hmm. Well, oh, well. What do we have here? Train ticket from Mexico City. You told Heather you're honeymooning without her? Huh. And... A nice little watch. Vacheron Constantine. That's an extremely expensive watch, Henry. Mmm. A graduation present for my parents. Sure, sure, yeah. That sounds about right. So... <clears throat> we know all about the jewelry ring. You and Randall and LeBlanc and Willie doing the legwork. I'm in the fashion business. Really? That's, that's the best you can do? You're lying, Henry. How can you prove that I'm involved, detective? Um, well, let's see. Let's start with the cigarette case you tried to s you sold. Because you pawned a Fabergé cigarette case today for $600, a case that is on a list of stolen items. It was Julia's idea. Uh, Get a list of society parties, and find out where and when, and then have the guests burgled. Julia was desperate for money. No matter how much we made, she always wanted more. Hmm. Why did Reed and LeBlanc kill Julia Randall? I, I wanted to stop, to, to get out of that life. I was going to marry Heather if she'd have me. Julia told the others that, that they were out, that she was going to create a, a new gang. Is that really what happened? You're lying, Arnett. I think you ordered them to kill her. It was made to look like suicide, and when the coroner saw through that, you knew it was time to run. I told you I was involved in the burglaries. I had nothing to do with Julia's death. Why would I need to run? I don't know. You tell me. One thing for certain is, you are trying to run. Have you told Miss Swanson that you're leaving for Mexico City tomorrow night? That it's a one-way ticket? Henry? Tell me it isn't true. I had no choice. I wanted to marry Heather. I told Julia I wanted out, and she laughed in my face. I had to pay Willie and Jimmy a fortune to do her, and now I'm completely broke. What you are, Buster, is under arrest. Hmm. Who is Henderson, and what is his involvement? Tell them what you know, Henry. I'll stand by you if you'll only tell the truth. There is no Henderson. You're not telling the truth. Tell me about your first burglary, and don't lie. I can't remember. I don't keep a list of these things. <sighs> yeah, but we do. Your first burglary was a Dr. Harold Stoneman. Do you want to explain how he is involved, or shall I? Henderson is Stoneman. 
He was uh, crazy about Julia. She could get him to do whatever she wished. He threw the parties and we arranged the burglaries. Julia never let him touch her. She just kept him hanging on the promise. Drove the good doctor almost insane. Hmm. Henry Arnett, you are under arrest for burglary and for the murder of Julia Randall. Henderson is Stoneman, all right? I'm not the guy you want. Go talk to the good doctor. Oh, we will, knucklehead. Meanwhile, we're fitting you for convict stripes. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. I guess the wedding's off. He only robbed her mother and killed her best friend. Cut the guy some slack. So how does the doctor fit in? That's what we're about to find out. Maybe we should ask him to give you a quick once over. That meathead gave you one hell of a pasting. I've had worse. You should have seen yourself staggering back in there like a drunken sailor. Next time you can take the runner, boy. I didn't box the Marines, though, did I? I should have never told you that. Hang on a moment, sister. Tell him it's Henry Arnett. And tell him it's urgent. I can't do that. Tell him, or I'll charge you with obstruction of justice. Doctor, I'm afraid Mr. Arnett is here to see you, and he says it's urgent. Send him in. Hmm. I told you never to come. Hello. Tell us the truth, Doctor. I'm so glad you came. Prison will be better than insanity, and I'm already half insane with grief. Do you know that I loved her? I ruined my life for her, and yet I still love her. Will you testify in court that Arnett and Randall did these robberies? They organized the robberies. Julie would get the names of the guests attending my wife's parties. Didn't matter how much money I showered upon her, it was never enough. She... never really cared for me. Doctor, I'm afraid you're under arrest. So... anything you say will be held against you. And... You'll call Dr. Gerard. No, 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 no. Please don't cry. I want to see no one. Not my wife, or my children, nor my friends. And I don't want a lawyer. Just lock me up and throw away the key. What have I done? What? Ah! Didn't see that coming. Well, <clears throat> operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. I need an ambulance on the coroner immediately to the offices of Dr. Harold Stoneman, 1646 Ivor Street, Hollywood. En route, detective. You have a message. Detective Bacalli says the suspect is named Wilson Willie the Wolf Reed, former wrestler. Last known mm. address is an apartment building at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Detective Bukowski says to meet them there. On our way. All right. Thanks. So yeah, we have an address for the runner. Let's try and wrap this up then. Yep. That old boy really fell for that broad. She was incredibly beautiful. Would you throw it all away for a woman? Life has a way of making you pay for your pride. You're quite the romantic, Phelps. Stick with the percentages. Broken hearts are for chumps. You're talking from experience. I certainly am. Oh, I like women as much as the next guy. As long as they're in their place and doing what they're told. He's around here somewhere, a big guy. Neighbors say he always wears basketball shoes and a cream jacket. And get this, the 
kids around here say he plays the harmonica. Find the game well and have the commander hmm. set up a dragnet. We want the area closed off. We'll take this out of the street. All right. <clears throat> a harmonica playing wrestler. That's a weird one. Think he knits as well. Just keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. We don't want him to bolt on us. Wilson Reed, LAPD, oh. give yourself up. Whoa. Son of a... Wilson? Get back here, Wilson. We have a couple of questions to ask you. Wilson, come on, man. Think about what you're doing. Hold it. He's got to be around here somewhere. No place to go unless you grew wings. There he is. Well, Wait, oh. Son of a bitch. Damn it. There we go. Son of a bitch really picked a spot for it up here, didn't he? Hmm. Julia Randall's folks are flying in from New York tomorrow to claim the body. I saw her on the slab. So perfect. Looked like she was made of porcelain. She really made an impression on me. Well, you had that impact on a lot of men. Yeah. Christ, it's cold. You guys did good work here today. Roy, I think you should buy your brother officers a drink. Do you now? That's very generous of you, Lieutenant. Just walking.